Hello and welcome back to 10 Minute English Lessons with Alex. This is episode number 30. And today we're going to go over two really important grammar points in the English language, gerunds and infinitive verbs. Like always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, hit the subscribe button below and a thumbs up button. That way you get all the new videos as soon as they come out. Without any further ado, let's get over to the classroom and start today's lesson. Okay, let's get started with today's lesson. But before we go any further, make sure you have your hot tea or coffee, whichever you prefer, a pencil and a piece of paper to take some notes. Now, in today's lesson, like any lesson, we must first look at the definition of the grammar points that we're gonna talk about today. Now, let's look at what a gerund verb definition first, and then we'll go on from there. So a gerund is, Basically, when you take a verb, an ing, and you put it together, and it changes form and becomes a noun. Now, I know this might be a little confusing for a lot of individuals who maybe just begun learning English, or maybe you've been learning English for a little while, and some of you might be used to uh, either the continuous or the progressive form of the verb. Uh, for example, she is eating or they were dancing. Normally that's what you learn in the beginning, but as your English becomes a little better and a little better and you start to improve, then you start to see the little nuance or the little differences in the English language. And one of those differences, when you take a verb, if you don't know what a verb is, it's an action word like run, jump, or stop. When you take a verb and you add an ing to it, it becomes a noun, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it becomes a noun and becomes the main subject of a sentence. So let me give you an example. Cooking is my favorite hobby. Cooking is my favorite hobby. So in this sentence, cooking is not a verb. It's actually the subject of the sentence. So it's actually a noun. Cooking is my favorite hobby. So here, if we normally, cooking is an action thing, so it'd be a verb, but in this sentence, it's not a verb, it's a noun because it's the subject of a sentence. Let's take a look at another example. I hate studying. <laughs> I hate studying. Again, here, studying is actually the subject of the sentence. So you take the study, the verb, I and G, and you put them together, and now it changes to a noun. And when it becomes a noun, it becomes the subject of the sentence, or the most important part of the sentence what you're talking about. So one thing to remember about gerunds, when you take a verb, an ing, and you put them together, sometime they become a noun and become the subject part of a sentence. Now part two of a gerund Stay with me here. <laughs> sometime they become a noun, sometime they become an adjective. Now, if you follow this channel for any length of time, or you're one of the students in class, we always, always talk about adjectives. And what does an adjective do? It describes something. It tells you what kind of something something is. For example, here is a baking tray for your cookies. Here is a baking tray for your cookies. What kind of tray is it? Ah, oh, it's a baking tray for your cookies. So again, adjectives tells us what kind something is. So if you take a verb and you take ing and you put it together in a gerund, sometimes it becomes an adjective because it's telling you what kind of something it is. Let's take a look at another example. A poster for missing kittens. A poster for missing kittens. Well, a kitten is just a baby cat. But the important part, what kind of poster is it? Ah, it's a poster for missing kittens. Or how about this? A country with a dwindling population. A country with a dwindling population. Now, dwindling means going lower and lower and lower and lower. 
what kind of country? A country with dwindling population. Japan is a great example of a country with dwindling population. It just means the population is going lower and lower and lower. The main point is we're describing what kind of country this is. So if you take a verb and an ing and you put it together and you're describing what kind or what something is like, remember, this is an adjective. One more example. The Amazon has a disappearing rainforest. The Amazon has a disappearing rainforest. Okay, what kind of rainforest does the Amazon have? A disappearing rainforest. So remember, if you're describing something, because adjectives describe something, if you have a verb and an ing together and they're describing something, this is now an adjective. So the first one, if you have a verb and an ing together and it's the main subject of a sentence, that is a noun. If you have a verb and an ing together and it's telling you what kind of something, it is an adjective. And of course, the normal verb, the, the simple one I think a lot of us know, for example, I am baking cookies. I am baking cookies. I'm doing something right now. So when you're doing something, that is the normal verb form. So I'm baking cookies. So again, we have a noun, we have an adjective, and we have a verb. Those are the three type of gerunds. Now that we know what a gerund is, let's look to the second part, infinitive verbs. This one is a little bit easier, and just like the first one, it has three separate parts. But the main thing you wanna remember about an infinitive verb, an infinitive verb is basically a verb with two in front. That's it. So if you have a verb with two in front, that's what we call an infinitive. So an infinitive has a noun form, an adjective form, and an adverb form. Don't worry, I promise we will go over all three. First, let's look at the noun form of an infinitive verb. For example, to sleep. My wife loves to sleep. Now the thing I really want you to remember, if you have a verb and two in front, they go together like a couple, okay? If you have two, if you have a couple together, you can never have a third person come into your marriage. Okay, normally, you can never have a third person come into your marriage. So you can't put two sleeping. You can't put two, a verb, and then an ing. You can't have three in a marriage. You can only have two. Well, depends on where you live. You can only have two people in a marriage. So if you have two plus a verb together, you cannot add ing. It won't match the couple. So for example, my wife loves to sleep. Okay. You cannot say my wife loved to sleeping because the infinitive together, you can not add a gerund with it. It doesn't match. It won't go together. So remember, if you have two plus a verb together, those are a couple, you cannot add ing. They do not like to be together. They want to be separate. Now, the another thing I want you to remember in this sentence, in this case, the infinitive, it acts like or it functions like a noun, okay? Because it's expressing someone's opinion. So when you have an infinitive like this, and it's expressing someone's opinion, it's actually a noun. Okay, so I know a lot of you are probably wondering, Alex, what is the difference between I love sleeping and I love to sleep? To be honest, very little difference. It's more just the grammar itself, but either one you choose to say, there's really no difference. It's just whatever you choose to say. But the thing I want you to remember, if you say, I love, for example, I love to sleep. I love to run. I love to eat. I love to play soccer. If you have the infinitive, the two plus the verb, that couple together, you cannot add the ing. They must stay separate. But if you say, I love sleeping, I love running, I love eating, I love playing soccer, you see there's no two there. 
There's no difference in the meaning really. It's just for the grammar, you really cannot add these together. You can't put an infinitive and a gerund together. These must stay separate. Remember that couple, they don't want the third person entering. All right. So now that we looked at an infinitive noun, of course we have to look at an adjective. So what does an adjective does? It tells you what kind of something is. Let's look at the sentence. We cannot play baseball until we find a ball to throw. So what kind of ball are you looking for? You're looking for a ball to throw. So again, we're looking for what kind something is. And whenever you're looking for what kind something is, you're normally talking about an adjective. I think the adjective we might be okay with, but the last one, the third one, is where it might be a little tricky for some people, and that's when an infinitive changes to an adverb. The one easy way to remember when it becomes an adverb is when it's telling you why someone did something. For example, Paul left the camping trip early to recover from poison ivy. So why did Paul leave? because he needed to recover from poison ivy. And poison ivy is just a sickness you get when you touch a plant that has poison on it. But the thing to remember, why did Paul leave? Because he needed to recover. So this last one here, when an infinitive changes to an adverb, is when it's telling you why someone did something. For another example, why did you not go to the party last night? Ah to study for my English test, to study for my English test. So I'm telling you why I didn't go to the party last night, because I needed to study for the English test. But again, you cannot put to studying for my English test because infinitive and gerunds, they do not like to go together. They want to stay separate. One more, why did you go to Mexico? Ah, to visit my friend to visit my friend. Again, I'm telling you why I went to Mexico. So the three forms you wanna remember with infinitives, it's noun, adjective, and adverb. Okay guys, how did you do? Again, this might seem a little difficult or a little complicated, but to be honest, the only important thing you must remember is if you have a verb plus ing, you cannot mix it with an infinitive to. You can't put to reading, to eating, to sleeping. You can't mix those together. If you have a verb and an ing, that is a couple. If you have to plus a regular verb, no ing, that is a couple. Do not mix gerunds and infinitives together. If you remember that, then you have no problem. All right, guys, the next time I see you, aloha.